Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the uh, what are the super important formulas which you need to keep in mind before going to the exam as a quick revision. Let's go through it quickly and um, revise what are the important formulas. So uh, let me consider the first one from the module one. We have two super important formulas, the A star and AO star. So let's have a look at that. The first one A star. Here let's consider this uh, example here. So basically what you need to do in A star is you'll be having two types of uh, values. These are uh, all called as G of N. G of N means what? Uh, the values to the uh, particular nodes or the edges cost okay that is called as g of n and the uh, things which are written above the circles that are called as h of n which is heuristic values so if you are put in a particular state how do you start a star algorithm you have to reach this state this state or this state what you will be calculating is you have to calculate f of n uh, value for each of these this is having one f of n value another f of n third f of n value so it is nothing but g of n plus f h of n choose the least cost part of, after that so what will be the cost of a b one plus five which is six what will be co the cost of a c six plus three is nine uh, nine what will be cost of AD, it is 1 plus 7 is equal to 8 okay so which is the least path we have the least path we have is a b okay in that way we will be proceeding further from b also will be doing the same things again okay so this was about the a star let's move on to AO star in AO star what are we supposed to do just that you need to keep in mind you in uh, AO star there's a possibility of having an and also okay so let's quickly revise what it is so in and graph what do you have is uh, two edges connected okay so here totally we have four nodes and three edges here this is edge connecting to B this is edge connecting so, uh, to C this is edge connecting to D and if you are going to traverse between two options like if you have to traverse from A you can traverse either B and C or you can traverse just D okay so the how the cost is getting calculated just addition simple addition if you are traversing this path you have to calculate 1 plus 4 plus 3 plus 1 so what it will be it will be 9 okay but if you are traversing here what will be the cost 1 plus 10 which is equal to 11 the shortest path you will choose which is uh, 9 in this case so don't judge too quickly like it is having two nodes so more cost will be there as you can obviously see it's 9 it's lesser than this one okay so wait till the end calculate all the possibilities then choose your answer okay let's move on to the next one in module 2 we have two kinds of formulas that we need to keep in mind that is about the predicate logic and conversion second is regarding the findest algorithm candidate elimination i have already discussed you can watch the separate video for that and uh, about the predicate logic and conversions what we have to actually uh, do here is we have to understand few symbols okay if you understand few symbols you'll be easily able to convert the sentences I mean the English sentences to the predicate logic okay so a few uh, symbols which I have to remember is the following ones um, this is known as for all and this is called as there exists implies not and uh, or and and okay so these symbols if you know it will be helpful for you to insert the symbols in the respective places now I will be considering the most repeated problem of uh, question papers uh, in the predicate logic they can directly ask you for six to seven marks okay so let's have a look at that here it's given Marcus was a man if this is the type one sentence here what you have is direct sentence is given Marcus was a man here you just have to apply one bracket and then you have to write an answer man and what's the man Marcus the second thing Marcus was whom a man so you'll we'll be writing man who was the man Marcus like that you will be writing again Marcus was a pompian here, here also you'll be applying the same formula this also type one pompian and then you'll be writing inside that Marcus here we have all pompians were Roman see if all comes for all this symbol we have to use for all x such that pompian of x that means Roman of x all pompians were Romans so if there is a pompian that means he is a Roman all for all x it's given that pompian of x uh, uh, implies roman of x okay caesar was a ruler again the same type one ruler inside that caesar all romans were either loyal to caesar or hated him here we have to use or and all also okay for all x roman of x that implies loyal or uh, hated loyal x comma caesar hated x comma caesar okay everyone is loyal to someone here we have to consider two things everyone and someone we will be considering x and y here for all x there is some y such that loyal x comma y x is loyal to y like that you have to read okay and uh, whenever you get like this everyone and someone then you have to consider two variables uh, if you get just uh, everyone and the second one is just a ruler or someone's name at that time you just have to consider one variable as in this case and then people only try to assassinate uh, rulers they are not loyal to now we have to uh, think in a, a broader perspective here we have two things x and y x is the people and uh, y is the ruler okay 
person of x is there and ruler of y is there and who tries to assassinate x tries to assassinate y and that implies not loyal to x comma y like that you have to uh, keep in mind first people is there ruler is there two variables are used then what is the action happening assassinate so you'll be writing an assassinate and what is the conclusion they are not loyal so not loyal to moving on to the last one we have Marcus tried to assassinate Caesar. Simple one, try assassinate who assassinated whom? Marcus assassinated Caesar. Whenever you get people or for all, at that time only you will be using variables. If you get everyone, someone, that time also you will use variables. If you have specific name of the person like Marcus and Caesar, that time you have to use just this one. Type 1 is this, type 2 is this, and type 3 is this. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. The next topic is the find us algorithm, a very simple algorithm. You just have to apply a few steps and you'll be able to get the answer. This uh, separate video I have uploaded, you can watch that. But here I'll be giving you just a few hints for your revision. Start with H as 0000. Here you have to take four zeros for the four attribute columns. And after that, consider only yes instances and ignore no. So in this case, we have no, no, yes, yes, yes. We'll be just considering the uh, bottom three instances. Okay. And uh, these two things I'll be just telling you in a shortcut way. What you have to actually do is see wherever yes is there just see if all are same all are same yes all are same no all are same no all are same yes wherever all are same was there just write that word here like overcast and question mark question mark and here you will be writing weak that's your final answer okay that's all what you have to do in the find this algorithm let's move on to the next module in the first half of the module 3, we have the entropy formula and the information gain as the most important concepts. So let's revise what is entropy formula. In entropy, what you have, you have to count the positive instances probability and negative instances probability. Just substitute in this formula, minus probability of positive, log 2 probability of positive, minus p negative, log 2 p negative. Done. That's all what you have to do. An example is given here. Suppose S is a collection of 14 examples of some Boolean concept. So there are totally 14 examples. And there are 9 positive examples and uh, 5 negative examples. Okay. So the entropy of S is uh, given as follows. Entropy of 9 plus and 5 minus. Minus 9 by 14. That is the probability of positive. Into log 2 9 by 14. Minus 5 by 14 which is the probability of negative. Into log 2 uh, 5 by 19. Like 5 by 14. This you can calculate and you will easily get the answer 0 0.940. Next, we have the information gain. Here, you just have to substitute the entropy you have found in this formula. Now, what is this formula? In this formula, for example, see, uh, there is a, a column attribute called as wind. Okay, like um, here, wind is there, right? Weak and strong, two values are there. This is one of the attributes we are considering and finding the information gain. We have to find the information gain for each of these outlook, temperature, humidity, and wind. Okay, so we have to find uh, in, in individually. So I'll be telling you for one, how do you calculate which data set you're considering? That is S, the whole data set play tennis and uh, which attribute you're considering wind. Okay, so values will be weak and strong. We have to calculate the entropy of weak, entropy of strong. So we'll be calculating uh, the entropy of weak and strong by the formula of the entropy, which I have just learned here. This substitute 6, 2 and 3, 3 in this place. Find out two answers and keep it as such. And uh, you'll be getting those answers here and that you just have to substitute. So the entropy of S weak and entropy of S strong means this row uh, which is calculated that will be substituting here. And here what we are substituting is minus 8 by 14 means what? 6 plus 2 is what? 8. 8 by total instances are 14. So that uh, probability of substituting here. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 by 14. That probability of substituting here. Then and entropy of S. This is remains constant. We have calculated here also the whole entropy. This substitute and find out the values will have an answer. Okay. This was about the first half of the module 3. The rest half of the module 3 has two super important formulas which is about the perceptron training rule. Here we have WI is equal to WI plus delta WI. The delta WI value will always be n into uh, t minus o into xi what is n it is the learning rate t minus t minus o means t is the target value which you are expecting and o is the what output you have got okay if target value you are expecting one and the output you have got as zero so it will become one minus zero xi is the particular input which you are giving okay this is there in the boolean functions video you can watch that uh, this implementation okay and uh, second important formula is uh, regarding gradient descent error we have to i um, mean many uh, derivations and algorithm this is used so remember this ew is equal to half of summation td minus od whole square half of summation td minus od whole square done moving on to the module 4 here many formulas are there first is the base theorem probability of h given d has occurred h is the hypothesis which you are uh, trying to predict d is the training example 
that is equal to p of d given h has occurred into p of h divided by p of d brute force map here you just have to remove the denominator pd and you will be remaining with the numerator values and in maximum likelihood you have to remove this ph from here and you will be remaining with just pdh then maximum likelihood and uh, maxima posteriori next we have minimum description length principle here we will have two terms c1 and c2 and that will be argument okay and h will be there as obvious and d by h will be there here also what is c1 and what is c2 c1 is the optimal encoding c2 is the optimal encoding of cdh like uh, two optimal encodings for ch and cdh that's all then moving on we have the nave based classifier here you have to remember p of uh, vj geometric mean of a into v just remember vav okay nave base vav argmax of vj into p of a divided by v this same thing is here p of v and just you have to adding a in between what is nave base classifier vav done moving on to the next one we have the nave base uh, basin belief network this uh, diagram is important this is called the directed acyclic graph or the dag okay here this dependencies you have to draw and this is the computational probability table okay and this also you have to draw when this question is asked then coming to em algorithm two steps are there first find the expected hidden value then find the new values so expected hidden value p of x by u divided by summation of p of x by u and that substitutions e power minus 1 by 2 sigma square x minus u x minus u whole square okay this you have to write and practice and next one u of j ez into x divided by ez both summations you will have okay so this is uh, very important moving on to the module 5 we have the distance formula for the numerical um x1 minus x2 whole square summation for all the attributes root and if you have discrete valued, uh, real valued, and um, distance weighted um, target valued, okay. So here we have uh, summations of uh, input and output v and f of x. If it is same, we'll get one. If it is not same, we'll get a zero. Just you have to write that. For real valued, we have the mean value, okay. F of x, all values you sub uh, substitute and uh, substitute and add divided by k. For distant weighted and distant weighted real, discrete and uh, real, all the change you have to just make is put a w here, put a w here. How you are putting w just put a w here that's all and uh, what is w inverse of distance okay what is w inverse of distance w is weight which is the inverse of distance and here also we'll be putting w w and w is same as inverse of distance then moving on we have the uh, locally weighted regression so you have to start from this one f of x same as the new uh, artificial neural network f of x is w naught plus uh, w1 a1 till w a uh, w n x a n x n okay and error formula is same f of x minus f of x whole square like td minus od whole square the same thing uh, you have to apply here and if you are calculating delta wj make sure you write uh, n value which is a learning rate value moving on we have the radial basis function here just have to remember this formula w naught plus w u k u d u kudu okay w u k u d u okay like that you have something you have to remember and this is again the same thing e power 1 by 2 sigma square d square of x u comma x means x u minus x whole square okay this is about the real base function moving on we have the cadet this diagram you have to remember in cadet we are deriving a new rule based on the previous rules this is the previous rules hot water and this is the uh, new rule cold water we are deriving a normal water then we have the reinforcement learning agent environment is there and states are reward are getting changed and action is getting taken place and this you have to remember if you have state 0 and a0 r0 you are moving on to state 1 a1 uh, r1 action you are taking and reward you are getting moving on further and this is called as a discount factor which is the um, delta value delta or um, um, beta i guess okay uh, what is q learning q learning is the two things are there optimal policy pi of uh, pi star of s arg max you are getting the maximum reward plus the uh, value based function okay and discount factor of multiply repeat with me pi star of s is equal to rsa plus vsa that's all rsa plus vsa this delta and uh, this thing you have you can put by yourself okay and q function is nothing but we are calculating each of these uh, individually here and uh, selecting the maximum one so what is q of sa again rsa plus vsa yeah done and q of sa which is the maximum q of sa that will become the optimal policy okay that's all for this video make sure you hit the like button subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one